Jonte Porter, a name that wasn't very well known before March 2024, but will now be known forever as one of the biggest sports gambling scandals ever. He was far from a normal player in the NBA, but now he'll never play again. Jonte Porter was given a lifetime ban from the NBA. Porter played on March 22nd against the Thunder before he was out for two games against the Wizards and Nets. And on March 25th, ESPN reported that he was under investigation by the league because of multiple instances of of betting irregularities. Less than one month later, he was banned by the NBA forever. Jonte Porter is now in the Sports Betting Scandal Hall of Fame, and there are some big names there. On May 14th, 2018, the door opened for gambling on sports in the United States, and now it's legal in 39 states and in DC, where Capital One Arena became the first pro sports arena with a fully operational sports book. It's only been about six years since then, and we've already seen plenty of controversies. Josh Shaw was really the first scandal. He played in 55 career games in the NFL and was a Bengals fourth round pick back in 2015. When he was on the Cardinals, he landed on injured reserve ahead of the 2019 season and ended up being suspended three months later for betting on the NFL and the Cardinals. He placed a low four-figure wager on a parlay that included taking the Buccaneers over the Cardinals in the second half of their Week 10 game. Shaw wasn't out there playing and the Bucs didn't even cover the spread. Safe to say that Shaw didn't exactly cover his tracks well. He bet openly and even listed his job as professional football player. He was suspended indefinitely which ultimately ended up being 21 total games, and he hasn't played in the NFL since. But Shaw isn't an isolated incident looking back. Calvin Ridley was suspended for the 2022 season after he was caught gambling on the NFL and the Falcons in a parlay while he was on the non-football injury list. Ahead of last season, five players were suspended for gambling, most notably Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams. A few months later, the NFL suspended four more players, three of which bet on their own team. NHLer Shane Pinto got suspended for 41 games about six months ago. Then Patriots wide receiver Kayshawn Booty got arrested a few months ago for illegally betting when he was at LSU. This is even getting to college now. Iowa and Iowa State had a big gambling scandal, and Alabama even fired their baseball coach because of a gambling scandal. Of course, Major League Baseball is having their own insane gambling scandal involving the biggest player in the sport, Shohei Otani. Sports betting scandals are going to come with this new age of sports betting, but the league's star player being right in the middle of it is really bad. Shohei's interpreter was fired after he was accused of stealing four and a half million dollars from Shohei to pay off his gambling debts. That's at least the story. Even though his interpreter originally said that Otani authorized and literally did the payments to help him get out of the gambling hole. Who knows what actually happened and if Shohei Otani was actually gambling, but the league also has to protect its big star. We are in a huge gray area when it comes to gambling in sports. It's a big problem and we're going to keep seeing big scandals. Jonte Porter is the big one now, but it'll be someone else soon. The Jonte Porter scandal all starts on January 26th in a game against the Clippers. Out of nowhere, there was an increased interest in the unders on his prop bets. And let me just say this. If you're betting on Jonte Porter unders, you probably need to call the number. Like, why would you even be betting on that? Stop it. Get some help. And the NBA knows that that was odd. That night, Porter played only four minutes before he apparently aggravated an eye injury that he suffered against the Grizzlies. The under hit on literally every prop, and the biggest money winner for betters on DraftKings was the Jonte Porter three-point under. That was certainly odd. There were allegedly multiple betting accounts that tried to bet large amounts on his unders, and one better even placed an $80,000 same-game parlay on his unders that would have paid out $1.1 million. It wasn't paid out, but still. Fast forward about two months to March 20th against the Kings. He played three minutes before leaving the game because of an illness, and again, all of his over-unders hit. It was the top money-making prop bet again on DraftKings. NBA players are obviously not allowed to bet on the NBA and get into all kinds of trouble if they do, and it's monitored to make sure that they don't. Players betting on their own sports could lead to some very serious integrity of the game issues, and that's why Adam Silver handed down the hardest outcome possible, a lifetime ban. 
Jonte Porter reportedly used an associate's account to place bets. He bet on the NBA at least 13 times, betting from $15 to $22,000 for a total of $54,000, and he had a profit of $22,000. None of those included games Porter played in, but he did have one parlay that took the Raptors to lose, which, funny enough, lost. It's also been reported that Porter placed over 1,000 bets on a FanDuel account that was closed once he signed with Toronto. Jonte Porter messed up badly, and now his NBA career is over. Well, just how good was he, and more importantly, how does this affect LeBron's legacy? Jonte Porter was born in Columbia, Missouri on November 15th, 1999. He played at Father Tolton Catholic, where he helped them win the Missouri Class 3 State Championship for the first time his sophomore season. Then he moved to Seattle, Washington, after his dad, Michael Porter Sr., got an assistant coaching job at Washington under Lorenzo Romar. Before that, he worked under Robin Pinchton for the Missouri women's basketball team. Jonte Porter comes from quite a big family. He has seven siblings. Two of his sisters, Bree and Sierra, played women's basketball together at Missouri, and Jonte played with his brother and probably the most famous person in his family at Missouri, Michael Porter Jr. He was once a five-star recruit and the top player in the class before going to Missouri. He later went 14th overall in the 2018 NBA draft, and now he's a star on the Nuggets and has a ring to his name. After he was uprooted and moved to Seattle, Jonte Porter played at Nathan Hale High School, where he was coached by Brandon Roy, a former Washington star, 2006 sixth overall pick, and three-time All-Star with the Trailblazers. They had a 29-0 season and won the Class 3A state championship. Jonte Porter averaged a double-double playing for Roy and wasn't just Michael Porter Jr.'s little brother. Once his dad went back to Missouri to be an assistant coach on the men's team, Michael Porter Jr. changed his college commitment from Washington. Washington to Missouri. Jonte decided to follow his brother to Missouri and was a five-star recruit, the second best player out of Washington behind Michael, and the 26th best recruit in the country. Michael Porter Jr. was hyped up a ton, only to suffer a back injury and need surgery after the Tigers season opener. He came off the bench in the SEC quarterfinals and in the first round of the NCAA tournament, but those were the only two games he played in his collegiate career. Meanwhile, Jonte went on to win a share of the SEC Sixth Man of the Year award after appearing in all 33 games with seven starts. He averaged 5.5 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 2.2 assists per game. While his brother went on to the draft, Jonte did the same, but he didn't hire an agent so he could return to Mizzou if he wanted, and he did just that. He returned only to miss his sophomore season after tearing his ACL and MCL in a scrimmage and later tore it again while rehabbing. Jonte decided to just declare for the draft and went undrafted before signing with the Grizzlies. He played in 11 games with Memphis, averaging 4.9 minutes per game and 2 points while shooting 53.3% from the field. He was waived and was with the Nuggets for the 2022 Summer League. In the 2022-23 season, he played for the Wisconsin Herd, the Bucks G League affiliate. Then he was with the Motor City Crews to start this past season, the Pistons affiliate. In December, he signed a two-way deal with the Raptors and ended up playing for them and their G League affiliate. He played in 26 games, started in five, averaged 13.8 minutes per game with 4.4 points per game. That ended up being just 37 career NBA games plus 33 career G League games. He started started 20 and averaged 26.1 minutes per game with 10.7 points, 10.9 rebounds, and 6 assists. Jonte Porter had a less than notable NBA career, but now he'll forever be known as the first player to get a lifetime ban in this new age of sports betting. This is bound to happen again in the sport, and Jonte Porter was just the first case of it.